What's up guys? It's Tom. Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to my life. Now, a common thing that is overlooked in music production that I see a lot, both producing and mixing, is the tool of automation. Automation is an incredible way to create moments in your song, to allow certain parts and certain instruments to stick out at certain times by ducking others and changing certain parameters. That way you can create these moments that engage the listener's ear and altogether make your track more interesting. So today what I want to do is dig into one of my sessions and show you a few different ways that I like to implement automation to create these moments and create these interesting things in my track. Now, before we get into it, I want to remind you to please subscribe to the channel, like this video if you're feeling it, and share it if you think it is super duper awesome. And if you do that, I'll think you're super duper awesome too. Anyway, moving on, let's dig into a session and I'll show you what we're working with. Now to break all this down, we're in a session for my track called Must Be Dreaming. Don't wait. dropped that song about a month ago. If you want to go check it out, there's a link below in the description of this video. You can go listen to it on Spotify or wherever else you want to hear it. Here's the track and here is the drop of the song, which is where we're going to be looking at some automation parameters that I've used. <laughs> Now, there are a couple of little spots in here that I want to show you that I've created some moments around. So the first couple are these little uh, effects that I've got going on in the second half of the drop. That again here. And then that little stagger thing that's going on. So what I've done is in these moments, I have allowed space for those by automating the volume in my synthesizers here. So in the melodies and in the saws here, the volume ducks ever so slightly where these moments happen. That way it will allow the ear to peak and they'll stick out a little bit more in the mix. It's not much, but it's just a subtle, small enough amount that will allow your ear to pick up on that little effect that's happening. Some other places that I have used a, lo a fair amount of automation are here in the, uh, the big saw synth here. So as you can see, I've ducked the master volume of Serum across the board in here to allow space for the snare drum to attack. Where that way it's not competing with the saws in the drop. And if you listen carefully, you can hear it on the downbeat too. So I've got it ducking on one and three. I'm automating the volume to cut out completely out of serum. That way it gets a full attack from the snare drum. But then I'm also automating side chain compression from the kick drum so that it ducks there as well. That way the kick and the snare throughout the entire drop remain very powerful and punch through the mix so you can hear them well. Another way to do this is to bounce this track to audio and simply cut the audio out. I opted for automation and sidechain compression to achieve basically the same result. Some other things that I'm doing are automating mute in the drop. So again, on the saws here in the second half, where these moments are happening, where these little sweeps and filters are happening that I want the listener to hear, I'm just cutting this track out entirely. That way those things have plenty of space to come through. Again, you could achieve this by just bouncing the audio and cutting it out. I opted for automation in this case. So there you go. And I've also got this little volume sweep here happening uh, with the master volume and serum as well. So a lot of different stuff happening that allows you to add it all up and get this. So as you can 
can see there are a lot of different things you can do. And I just wanted to make this short video to show you that automation is really your friend in your sessions. It allows you to create these little subtle moments that allow different textures and things to stick out and can help assist with sound design, especially like in your drop or in big sections of your song where there's a lot going on. There's a lot of volume coming from a lot of different places. You can do this across the entire EQ spectrum. So you can carve space for your kick to poke out by ducking the bass. You can do it for your snare to poke out by ducking your synth, guitars, things like that. You can do it so that your vocal track can cut through at certain frequencies by ducking other frequencies in certain spots. This is a way to have really specific control over what you want to do in your session rather than just relying on a plugin to sort of blanket catch everything. This allows you to really carve and construct exactly what you want the listener to hear. And it's a really, really effective tool that I see a lot of people overlooking most of the time. So I wanted to make this video and share that with you. This is what I do. And it has been really, really helpful in my producing and in my mixing process. So I hope it helps. I hope you dig it. That's it for this video. Thanks for being here and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.